Well, welcome to Arts Alive 2021. My name is Claire Elam. I am the Artist Accelerator Program Director through the Art Center. Um, we're so excited to have Arts Alive um, around in 2021 after the crazy 2020. Um, we've got 23 videos up on our website right now. Um, we've got an artist discovery tour, which ends this evening. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to see those at the Art Center as well afterwards if you missed out. Um, that comes with a grand raffle prize um, worth, I think, about $1,000. So whoever wins that is going to have a great day. Um, we've also got a um, performances by Haley Loren and Judd Turner and um, an meditative auditory um, piece as well through um, Field Guys, which is run by Hannah Simmons and Leah Crosby, um, so all kinds of great stuff. Um, I wanted to thank some of our larger sponsors and supporters, um, in particular Travel Oregon. Um, thank you so much for your assistance this year. We could not have done it without you, especially that artist discovery tour. Um, there's so many other wonderful sponsors and supporters. Um, Sharon Rackham King in particular was uh, a fantastic help this year and so many others that I'm, I'm not gonna take the time to name all of them right now, but you can find them on our website if you're curious. Um, right now we have uh, Haley Loren and Dana Reason with us tonight. Um, Dana is going to be interviewing Haley. Um, welcome to both of you guys. I'm so glad you're here and we were able to do this, um, even, even if it's remote this year. Maybe next year we can have you guys in person. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so uh, I'm Dana Reason and I'm so excited to be able to have this opportunity to talk with Haley Lauren. Um, Haley Lauren, if you're, we probably have a lot of fans here for you for sure today. And then we have probably some new explorers that are getting to know your music. And you're an international recording artist. You um, sing in a variety of styles. You're also a, a singer songwriter and a composer. So welcome to you. I want to say hello first. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Thank you. I feel very welcome. And so are you coming to, where are you coming to us from today? Oh. I'm on the Oregon coast right now, actually, um, on a little three-day family vacation, my kind of my sum my summer trip. Fantastic <laughs> this year, of course, like mo like many people are. Mm -hmm. uh, but I live in Eugene. Um, okay. so typically, I'm I'm in Eugene. But. Typically, but you're getting some of that beautiful, cooler weather. I hope. Oh my goodness! Oh, been... Thank goodness, yes, it's been so refreshing. Nice, nice, nice. So first, before we start, I thought we could just have this wonderful conversation um, about being this tremendous artist at this particular time in our history. But first, I want to say and ask you, like, how are you doing being this artist and what we're living through right now? Can you start us off with that? Yeah, that, that simple question. <laughs> exactly. Right out there. Uh, you know, that's a hard one to answer, um, as I imagine it, it is for most anyone you talk to. But I think particularly for performers, um, people who, we, we performers, I think, were among the first who were sort of hit by the effects of all of this on our jobs, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, you know, I, I think um, we're kind of trying to figure out what normal means right now um, and sort of find, find our way sort of to continue to do our craft and continue to uh, be working artists. And I am no exception to that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I feel like I feel very lucky um, in many ways in that um, I've been able to find some ways to continue doing music, uh, even during the times when all venues were closed down for pretty much the full year. Uh, and a lot of them continue to be or or have a lot of, you know, uh, difficult scenarios they're trying to navigate. Um, but I feel like I've, I, I'm doing well in that. I'm healthy, <laughs> I'm still creating, uh, but I, I'm also just trying to adjust to the constant changing of everything. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it's a wow. weird time. 
it's an absolutely strange time, but I love the idea of, you know, you being able to have your music to keep kind of moving forward during this time, um, you know, and that's an inspiration right then and there. I would love to ask you, um, maybe how has your music evolved since, you know, not being on the road, has that given you more time to create or go to new uh, adventures in your music or explore even uh, further? Could you talk to us about that? Um, it's, it's certainly brought a lot of my creative energy from like being very out here and very, very related to sort of engaging one-on-one -on -one with people in person and audiences who were right there, right? Where it was very external energy to kind of this sort of um, feeling of very intimate energy where it's just all sort of whatever's in my space, my personal space, that's sort of, in, that's the stuff that's inspiring me right now it's also sort of what i'm interacting with a lot being in in um sort of uh solo spaces where i'm singing or and performing and playing uh piano etc in a room by myself <laughs> or with one other person right um like in the performance that i did with with daniel gallo for arts alive um we've done quite a bit of of live stream performing over the last year um, but it's definitely just sort of brought this uh, newfound attention to, um, I don't know, being really, I mean, I, I feel like my music's always been authentic to me, but it's been this sort of new vulnerability that I've had to sort of gain comfort, comfort with and, and make friends with and even be able to use for, in, in a positive way, like this sense of being really exposed and not knowing exactly how it's landing in real time and being okay with that. that that's that been a bit of a journey, <laughs> but I feel like it's opened up some new, maybe some new creative channels for me as well, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love hearing about that. I mean, you're an artist that's been working really, you know, you, you started what, at, t at 10 years old? Yes. Is, that, is that the beginning <laughs> of you coming to the world? Can you Can you talk to us about this? So now we've got this like, time frame of evolution of you stylistically but also within living in the now um could you talk to us about those early days and and now you're in this new kind of vulnerable space i'd love to hear yeah. that i mean it was a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was uh i was 10 years old when i did my first performance in front of other people uh not professional at that point of course i was just learning how to not be so terrified I couldn't make sound in front of others. I, I've been a singer my whole life. Um, you know, I've not been a performer my whole life. Um, that always came with a lot of practice and you know, getting over a lot of stage fright, uh, getting out of my own way. I, I was not a natural performer necessarily. I always felt sort of like, uh, you know, something I had to learn. Um, but I was a, I was a, kid in Alaska. I was growing, growing up in Southeast Alaska in a town called Sitka on an island um, up there and uh, was really into music. I had the opportunity to attend a, a fine arts camp when I was that age and then the next year as well. So 10 and 11 and that fine arts camp, which didn't only focus on music, but, but uh, did have music classes, including a jazz improvisation class, which I didn't even know what jazz was at the time. Um, and when I was in that class, I learned, oh, yes, I do know what jazz is. I just didn't know what the genre was, but I've been listening to it since I was tiny. Um, my mom had a, always had a quite a big record collection, CD collection for the most part, <laughs> of a lot of jazz and blues and, and folk and all kinds of music. So I, I'd been steeped in it my whole life. I just didn't know what it was. Um, and that kind of set me on the path to be really interested in what it was like to collaborate with other people because I got to play with a sing with a live band in that first year of my exploration of performing um, a live jazz trio, which was so transformative. And I just kind of took it from there. And um, I moved to Oregon when I was 13 and that gave me the opportunity to really expand my um, music experiences in collaborating with other people and doing things live because there's only so much you can do in a town of 8,000 people on an island. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> I mean, <laughs> and, you know, I had a lot to learn. Um, 
but I did, a, I hit the road running and did a, a ton of things thanks to the grace of friends and strangers who wanted to help mentor me and bring me into their variety shows and their, uh, you know, talent contests and their, you know, and their gigs that I got to sit in on and guest artist as a child. And that was hugely uh, effective for kind of getting my feet under me. And by the time I was 14, I was able to start doing concerts um, that were professional grade. And I started making a little bit of, you know, a living as a teen um, performer. And from there, it just became more and more part of my life. You know, I, I love hearing your story and just the idea of thinking about a community of of people of mentors right so there wasn't like a particular teacher and it wasn't that you went to like particular lessons every week but the community um engaged and brought you forward and people came out of the woodwork you know like you said some are strangers and some were were friends to mentor but your mother's collection of cds was probably your first you know mentorship and you might as well start at the top i'm i'd love to hear what your mom had uh, playing for you to get you so excited about this music that you could connect to such a oh, deep way. Gosh, I, well, I mean, it, the the music was vast, but I would say the things that stand out the most are are still some of my favorites to this day. Um, I was, you know, enthralled with Nat King Cole. Mm -hmm. uh, Patsy Cline was an idol for me. Um, I knew all of her songs by 11, I think um and sung along with her um i loved etta james um i heard a lot of by that time diana crawl was starting to become a popular artist in jazz circles and we had her first couple of albums and i loved them um i would say annie lennox um she was on repeat for me a lot um mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to think. Jo well, Joni Mitchell, I kind of came to later in my teen years, but a uh, huge, huge uh, inspiration there. Um, we listened to a lot of Willie Nelson. Um, a lot of artists that I, you know, probably, I can't even really remember all of their names off the top of my head. <laughs> but it, you know, just a lot of people from the jazz lexicon, but also roots music and, and a lot of but she had a lot of compilation albums too. So I got like this really nice variety of all kinds of artists that I didn't necessarily hear their full albums until much later. But my early days were just a lot of, you know, variety. Of, mm -hmm. It really does make a big difference when you stretch out and the, your ears, um, there's, a, there's a phrase that some musicians use for, for other musicians saying like they have big ears and it doesn't mean they have big ears it means they have they 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 can hear and pick up on a lot of things and i think that that can only come from exposure to a lot of things so and and that exposure that you're talking about i mean that breadth of of really truly deep listening right because as a as a child taking in this music right you're just surrendered to it probably right yeah. you're probably just singing your heart out and you're just right there with that with the recording that you're listening to right and you've got yeah. that on repeat and so you're training yourself to have this like deep affiliation with you know maybe things like phrasing that you know you weren't getting yeah. all up in your in your head about you were just responding you know in a visceral way and teaching your body these kinds of ways of of putting the sounds together yeah and a lot of mimicry honestly like mm -hmm. for me that was a huge part of learning mm -hmm. um my own voice like how to do certain things was just listening and and trying it over and over and over again and it feels weird at first it feels like you're doing a bad job at first but if you're doing it enough especially in the privacy of your own space and there's no one there judging you and uh it sort of becomes a practice um of becoming flexible and learning your voice and so many of these techniques you know you can only get good at them by doing them <laughs> absolutely <laughs> well just to touch on this just a bit more so when when people listen to your albums you know some of your albums have just um original music on it with kind of covers and it seems to me that some of those covers like I heard your your rhythmics covers and 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 uh, other artists on there. Um, 
it feels like you have a real dialogue with the original too. Like you are making it your thing, right? You know that's, their music so well. <laughs> yeah, that? absolutely. That's that's the goal uh, for sure. Like you know, don't 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 do it like the other person did it. Um, use it as a as a leaping off point, right? If you admire what they're doing, then try, you know. I know that uh, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, but in terms of music, you know, make it your own as well. You can like, that's where the magic happens is when you do what you uniquely can do with, with that, you know, with that piece. So say when you're, you're doing a cover live with your audience, right? Are, do you ever have like a little duet going on? Like you can hear them in their original <laughs> and then you're like, you know, almost, <laughs> talking with them with the way you're doing it is it what's the magic in that i can't say that i've ever consciously done that but maybe the next time <laughs> it sounds like right. fun. why not right um, on i think well, yeah, yeah the the old the older i get and the more experience i i have with performing the the less that i even bother recalling what i ever what i did previous time or what another artist has done it's it's new every time for me and that's partly why i think i'm so drawn to to jazz music is that it's so improvisationally based like i know the melody of the song but i can play with it as much as i want i can phrase it however i want like there's no expectation for me to do the same from mm -hmm. myself or from my audiences. So it's really freeing. Absolutely. So um, I would love to, so some people may have already heard your set with um, David Gallo, right? For yeah. today. Yeah. And some people may have heard it and want to go back and listen a little more closely after our conversation as well. They should listen as many times as possible, I think. I would love for you yeah. to talk, talk to us about, you know, what they're going to hear or what they yeah. heard and um, tell us about those works, starting with the Yellow Bird. Yeah. yeah, so um, Daniel Gallo and I played uh, three songs. And the first one is a song called Yellow Bird that I wrote. Um, I'm a songwriter as well. I've been writing since I was 13 as well. Um, and a lot of my albums, as you mentioned, have original music on them. Some of them are original music albums, whereas others have you know several of the songs that are original, but the rest are not my songs. Um, so Yellow Bird was featured on a 2015 album I put out called Butterfly Blue. And it's a sort of a meditation uh, on what, what freedom is uh, through this metaphor of a story of this caged bird. Um, and uh, yeah, it's one of, my, one of my favorites and kind of an audience favorite in all the places I go and play music. So I always really like doing that one. Um, the second song is a song that Daniel Gallo wrote he's playing guitar um and it's called evergreen it's a meditation on nature <laughs> and um it sort of feels like a very oregon spirit sort of song it, it it evokes that the feeling of being um really steeped in oregon for me um but it, yeah it's called evergreen and he and i have played it and are going to be soon releasing it as a, a single with our duo project, which we call Shadow Sway. And the third song is a song that Daniel and I wrote together. So sort of knitting it with um, one of my originals, one of his originals, and then a, a co-write original song. This one is called Paint the Stars. And we um, perform it with a band that we have that we're both in called Haley and the Moon. So it's sort of a smorgasbord, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you will of um, some some songs from the various, some of the various groups I'm a part of. It's not the entirety of what I do musically because I'm also one of the lead singers in an Oregon based band called the Sugar Beats, which I've been part of for 12 years now. Um, and I, you know, do these, I do collaborations with people and, you know, always try to keep it, uh, keep the variety there. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, one of the things I did notice is that you've got a, a quite a wonderful collection of, of collaborators and co-creatives with you, um, kind of, and that you name the the musicians, the various musicians that you work with, um, as I think that's a testament to kind of the integrity of that you're working, and I think that you maybe you have moments where you're creating with them in real time as an improviser as well, and then shaping those songs. And so have, have, have a lot of those um, collaborators been around? Is that sort of your nexus? Is that your kind of core group of people that you like to work with? I saw some from the Willamette Valley, so I was so excited about that too. And yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of the people that I play with, I've been playing with for a long time. Um, like the, uh, like Daniel and I have been obviously playing together for like 10 years um but the pianist that's on a lot of my albums and co-produced a number of them with me also uh, is matt treader and we've been playing together since since i first became a professional musician so since i was 14 long time <laughs> wow. we'll not say how long that's been no, um we don't need to go there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. but um uh, you know, as uh, as we were chatting a little bit before we went live, um, uh, I just played a gig um, with uh, two Corvallis musicians who I've also played with on and off for a very long time. That's um, Rob Birdwell, who mm -hmm. is a fantastic trumpet player, and Ryan Bisak, who plays drums. Um, mm -hmm. And I have played many a gig with them. I've toured internationally with them as well, as well as Matt. And then... Um, you know, Sean Peterson, who lives in um, in Eugene as well. And I have quite a number of Oregon musicians that I've played with or play with regularly or or, or on occasion. Um, I also have, you know, friends in faraway places that when I tour in those places, I play with, with those musicians. And um, I've definitely stretched out in terms of my circle of collaborators in recent years. Um, which has been lovely so that I can, you know, travel to more places and play mm -hmm. with, you know, full groups that way. Um, yeah, absolutely. Sometimes tour logistics can be, can be tricky. Absolutely. <laughs> bringing a whole bunch of people with me. Um, okay. So it's, it's nice to be able to make new friends and, and try, try, try um, new collaborations and mm -hmm. sort of grow as a musician and grow friend group. It's, it's lovely. COVID's been making that a little harder. <laughs> We're going to keep, you know, soldiering on here. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, sort of your last album before, you know, we kind of have this grand pause going on in our world uh, from the wild sky from 2018. Do you so could you tell us a little bit about that album? And are you going to kind of pick that up and, and just start taking that on the road again once we're ready to move forward? Or uh, could you talk about that? Yeah, it seems like forever ago right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, I did release that in 2018. Um, that was such a labor of love. That was my my first original album since the very beginning of my making albums. My first album that I made was an all original album called Full Circle. And so, and that was in 2006 that that came out. And so this was my, From the Wild Sky was my first original album since then. Mm -hmm. um, and those songs are just so personal and um and so in many ways autobiographical although they're not all necessarily my stories through and through um some of them are you know pieces like quilts from experiences and other people's stories who are close to me things like that but um that album was my first foray into recording uh outside of my own personal studio space I um, I ended up uh, doing a Kickstarter campaign to be able to fund the album um, because I, I was working with a, a an outside producer for the first time, um, which was uh, Troy Miller, who lives in London and has quite a wonderful discography to his name, um, working with you know Amy Winehouse and um, uh, Becca Stevens and just a whole litany of really wonderful artists. Um, Gregory Porter, he's produced things for him. He just pr produced, oh, oh my gosh, Diana Ross. He produced Diana Ross's new album, just like crazy wow. stuff. Anyway, um, it was it was a wonderful experience and the Kickstarter was, was a success, thank goodness, because <laughs> that helped me actually do it. 
Um, so I recorded in New York and in London um, with just amazing world-class musicians and they just brought these songs to life in such an amazing way. And, and yes, I was touring still actively uh, for that album uh, when the world shut down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I love that album so much. I think that it, it, it has such a range on it and, and there's something really there for anyone to hold on to. I mean, you can hear again, those influences, but they're, but, the, but that music belongs to you now fully, you know, you can hear like, oh, wow, there's a blues thing here, but that's not quite the blues thing. And there's sort of maybe a little bit like this could move into another like form of music musical, I want to say musical theater in a way, some of that, like, I was like, that could be like transformed into this other thing. And yeah. um, just very touching, evocative work too, very poetic throughout. Yeah. So I think that hopefully, you know, you're now on this next trajectory of just, it's all your music, right? It's just like you, more you. Um, I, th I think it's a gorgeous album and I hope more people um, are going to get really exposed, especially in hearing you play this. Um, take this out on the road live. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll 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 continue to play the, some songs from that for sure. Um, and I'm also looking down the road to my next project because it's been, gosh, coming up on three years since I released it. However, uh, you know, I've done a lot of albums in my life, so I don't necessarily feel like, oh gosh, I need to put out more work. I I I want to put out more work, but I put out. 10 albums at this point in my life. So that's a lot. It's a big discography. So anyone who's just jumping in and, and uh, discovering the music and wants to hear a whole lot, they're in luck. <laughs> there's, there's a lot to hear. I love that there's a lot to hear. Um, I know we only have a few moments left. I was going to ask you for, for um, if we have like emerging, you know, singer songwriters or young instrumentalists that want to, you know, maybe work as arrangers or uh, remix some of your music or things like that. Mm -hmm. um, what, what kind of um, advice or thoughts, what, what could you give them to get them on their way to? Oh, you know, uh, I wouldn't know the first thing about remixes. <laughs> I like <laughs> listening to them, but I have, I have no, I have, I, I am kind of um, amazed by what I hear from people who do remixes. I'm like, how do you do that? It's amazing. It would be, it would be extremely lovely to hear uh, remixes of my songs. Um, I welcome it. Uh, reach out to me. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, I was, I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And as far as you know, people who are instrumentalists or vocalists who are, um, who are sort of uh, seeking advice like I my biggest piece of advice is just um listen a lot try a lot of things don't be afraid to make a fool of yourself especially if you're just by yourself um you know practice the things that you love and and do them until they feel like they're an extension of you and um and bring it back to like how do I want to say this how what feels like my voice um, and until it feels like that, you know, just keep doing it. <laughs> and then after that, keep doing it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many things that you can do with music and it's all right. Mm -hmm. There's no one way. Um, and I think just like settling into knowing that there's no one way and that your way is as valuable and as valid as anyone's is a really freeing idea. Kind of takes, takes the, some of the pressure off. I agree. And I think that, you know, just talking with you and listening to your music is that this is your sound. This is your music. And um, I think it, the world's going to be really excited for your next project, too, when it when you're ready to release that and, and go out. And um, well, I hope that people will go back and listen to your duo with David today after our discussion. And it's just been a delight to talk with you today. So thank oh, you so thank, much. Thank you so much for, for today. I really appreciate being able to be here with you. Thank you, Dana and Claire. <laughs> thank you both so much. That was lovely to listen to. Learned a lot. Um, I thought I knew a few of things and, and I think I I knew like two of the things that you talked about. <laughs> so that's great. Um, you and me both. <laughs> Well, thank you again, um, and if you haven't had an opportunity, please check out uh, the rest of Arts Alive. Yeah, amen thanks. to that. Thank you, Arts Alive. Thanks, Corvallis Arts Center. Thanks to both of you.